RealAirCulture.com presents Under the Microscope with BioVision Seed Labs. All right, we are here with Holly Gellich, Manager of Business Development with BioVision. And uh, this is Episode 1 of Season 2 of Under the Microscope. We are going to talk about uh, the importance of seed sampling, uh, how, to do, how to get a representative sample and um, ship it to the seed lab and why that's important. Welcome here, Holly. Thank you very much, Lindsay. I'm very excited to be working with you this year in our second season of Under the Microscope. Great. All right. So um, we're here in, in, I guess, early fall. Uh, harvest is, is well advanced in Manitoba, uh, a little bit ahead in Saskatchewan and, and, and well underway in Alberta. We're kind of in the home stretch here for some. Um, now is a now is a good time to be uh, taking samples and sending stuff into the seed labs. Um, so let's go over maybe the importance of of getting a representative seed sample and and how you might do that. Absolutely, that's a great point to start. Is getting a representative sample, Lindsay? Now there are very various risks to not taking a representative sample, and I'd like just to spend a minute going through that. Okay. And probably the most important thing is if you do not take a representative sample, a quality issue may not get identified. And at the end of the day, that's so important to identify an issue now so that either a decision can be made on sourcing a different lot of seed or a certain remedy can be taken. Um, another risk that could be is you could be inflating a seed quality issue. Mm -hmm. And in that case, an uh, incorrect decision to dispose of a seed lot may be taken. So representative sample is really a sample that that is an adequate reflection of the entire lot. Okay. Now, sam sampling techniques, there's various ones out there. Uh, the most common one in Western Canada would be stream sampling. Right. And stream sampling is really from... Uh, from your from the truck after harvest right into the bin. Mm -hmm. Now there are automatic samplers out there nowadays, and they are becoming more and more popular. So I think it's it, it's a fantastic way to proceed. Mm -hmm. But I would say that majority of the farmers now are doing the manual stream processing. Okay, and now so so certainly that's that's probably the quickest, easiest, uh, and maybe most accurate way to really get a good look at at what's going into the bin. What if you're already in the bin? What do you do if you if you didn't do the stream process? How do you get a represent, representative sample of what's in the bin if you're not turning the bin or anything like that? Uh, quite, quite often producers will use various mechanisms to get samples out. Um, some of them will go to the efforts of actually moving the bin. Um, during the winter that's that may not be the best solution or, yeah. or really the easiest solution yeah, when there's yeah. a lot of snow around. So quite often it would be a grain program type process. Mm -hmm. Now, I, again, with harvest is still underway, so I, I highly recommend the stream processing way. Mm -hmm. And with stream processing, um, it's not just uh, um, sticking a cup underneath the stream. It is really thinking about the process that you're doing. Taking your instrument. Now, there's two different types of instruments. One is a, a pelican type. Mm -hmm. It looks like the pouch of a pelican, really, and it's mm -hmm. quite a large base. And the other one is, is, is quite simply, and perhaps something that can be manufactured on farm, a cup on the end of a stick. Mm -hmm. And when the stream sampling is occurring, it producers should not only go into the center of the stream, but also on the, the inside and outside of the stream. Okay. Now, uh, once you've got the sample, whether it's through stream sampling or from the bin through your grain probing, um, the next step is really to be dividing your sample. Okay. Um, because when you're sampling, you're taking, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30 samples, say on a 40 ton load, you need to get it to a workable size that yeah. can be shipped to us. And, yeah. and in the lab, uh, we recommend about 250 grams for the basic testing, which okay. we'll go through in a little while. Yeah. Uh, so you need to take this big sample and divide it down. And in the seed industry, some seed companies will have a ripple divider which is really uh, um, an instrument that has a hopper on the top and then it divides it into various sections. Uh, but producers, the easiest way is you know, through is really hand sampling and stream sampling your small sample down to a workable size. Okay. All right. Um, now, once, once we've got, you know, that 250 gram sample, um, any tips for shipping uh, as far as any sort of special handling or anything like that to make sure that, you know, bags don't rip and those sorts of things on the way uh, to the lab? 
Uh, what we have is we have various different types of bags, and they range from uh, plastic bags, which are used by pedigree seed growers mm -hmm. for a full 1 kg purity. Okay. Those are rest less rare. Producer samples would utilize an envelope, mm -hmm. uh, which is paper, mm -hmm. and the best shipping method would be courier. Uh, nowadays, um, most, comp uh, most small communities have a courier service either through a uh, local grain handling facility, a crop input center, or a municipal seed cleaning plant. So that would be the, the best method to ensure it's packaged extremely well. Mm -hmm. If there's multiple samples, definitely put them in a box versus in um, a, a plastic container. Okay, for sure. Um, now we are, you know, in, in the midst of harvest and... Um, uh, you know, farmers that are sending in a sample, what would you say are the, the minimum kind of tests that you, you would think uh, a farmer needs to run to give them, you know, a good indication of, of what they're looking at for that seed sample? The basic two tests that I would recommend pretty much for any crop that is grown in Western Canada would be your germination test, and the second one would be a disease test. Now, the purpose of the germination test is to give you your potential of the seed lot. In our lab, it's grown under ideal conditions. Right, yeah. So this gives you your, your highest level that you can attain. So the second test would be disease testing, and that's both on any of the pulses that you're growing, uh, any of the cereals that you're growing. And really the method for that is we, we conduct um, a, uh, a bioassay on a plate, so it's on a potato um, agar um, media, mm -hmm. and then we incubate it for a week and evaluate what type of diseases are are within the kernel itself. So okay. this is something that, you know, those two are the most important minimum ones to be asking for at this time of the year. And then decisions can be made. If there's high disease levels, producers can then make the decision that, okay, I want to source another lot. Or plan B is I need to talk to someone about seed treatment. So this right. is a great time to find out what you need for your seed lot now instead of looking into something into April where uh, supplies of crop protection products may be limited. Right. And and that's the important point to make is that, you know, I, I think it's, it is, it's, quite typical, of course, just before seeding to kind of, you know, um, and we'll talk about this later in the winter, you know, just ahead of seeding to get a good uh, look at your germination levels and, and those sorts of things. Um, but but certainly this early, before things go into the bin, before they go into storage, it, it really could give you a, a very early indication that you might already want to do some legwork and make some decisions on whether or not uh, this is the seed lot you're going to keep or not, right? I mean, this gives you the most lead time, really. Absolutely. And there are some specialized crop that have unique testing needs that I would also recommend at this time of year. Mm -hmm. And one of them would be for uh, clear field confirmed crop types. So that would be clear field confirmed lentils as well as wheat. Mm -hmm. Now, um, both those products have various farm safe programs. And that would be another recommendation is to do your clear field confirmed, which is a, a herbicide bioassay tolerance test mm -hmm. at this time of the year as well, instead of holding it off until later into the spring. Wonderful. Okay, thanks so much, Holly. We'll talk again soon. Great. Thank you, Lindsay.